how do I know if what I have is really the flu and not just a common cold or some other upper respiratory infection? It's a good question, and um, I think knowing that flu is, this is flu season, knowing that flu is active in your community. Um, kids are out of school, you listen to that, that usually means that there's a respiratory virus going around and that's usually influenza. Um, many of the respiratory viruses, um, cold viruses, are not associated with fever. So if you have significant fever with it, that's usually a sign it's influenza. Um, this diffuse muscle aching, very common influenza, is relatively uncommon with the cold viruses. They generally produce a runny nose, a sore throat, but not a lot of systemic symptoms, meaning the rest of your body is not feeling well. So fever, diffuse aching all over, those tend to be characteristic of influenza and not characteristic of the usual other respiratory viruses, which are also active in the wintertime. You partially answered this, but let me, let's me let dwell on it a little bit. Why are older people, young children, pregnant women, why are, why are these groups of people more at risk for uh, the flu and the complications <clears throat> thereof? Um, I think we partially answered it for older individuals. They, um, the flu itself can have complications. It impairs the immune system of the respiratory tract. The normal clearance mechanisms for getting rid of bacteria and things are impaired after you have an episode of influenza, and they may be impaired for a month or longer. So if you're exposed to a bacteria that causes pneumonia, your risk is really significantly greater after you get influenza. So if you have an older population, they're in a nursing home, they have a serious chronic lung disease, they get flu, now they're at risk for pneumonia, and they get pneumonia, and they just don't handle pneumonia because their lungs are not functioning as well, their overall strength is not as good, um, and their risk of ending up in the hospital and or having very serious complications is just basically much higher. Sometimes it's just the flu itself, but other times it's the infectious complications that occur associated with having influenza. Besides getting a shot, the, the current uh, vaccine, what else can I do to avoid getting the flu? Actually, it's a really good question. I think the best answer is there isn't much you can do. And that's the reason we have vaccines. That's the reason because people will say, well, I can do this and this. I don't need to go get the vaccine. The answer is, yes, you do. Um, the one thing we can say that you can, we now have medicines that are available by prescription that will help you against influenza A, both the seasonal influenza A and the epidemic influenza <clears throat> A, that will reduce the severity of the disease. And everybody knows about it. Tamiflu is the one that was best known. Um, there are several others. They will diminish the severity of the disease if taken early. Um, I think those Staying home and, I mean, it probably reduces your risk, but, I mean, who can do it for a prolonged period of time? Sooner or later, you go to church, you go to school, you pick up your grandkids, and you're going to be, expo be exposed. So assume that you're going to be exposed um, and go from there. Here's a bonus question. Is it possible in the United States to have a repeat of the 1918 flu epidemic? <clears throat> um everything would have to be perfect to do it. If you think about 1918, we didn't even know it was a virus. We couldn't grow it. We had no vaccines. Um, and it turned out to be a virus that its parts had never been seen by the population before. Um, and it was devastating because everyone was at risk. Well, the current epidemic vaccine also had basically not been seen by most individuals, but interestingly enough, it wasn't very aggressive. I mean, it just produced, and many people said it was even less significant than regular seasonal flu for reasons that we don't totally understand. Such was not true for the virus of 1918. I mean, that was a swine flu, but somehow the genes were made up in such a way that it was deadly and we ended up having millions of individuals who died. 
Our advantages are we can recognize by doing DNA studies whenever we get a, a grow of a flu virus, we can quickly match it to everything that's been grown in the past, including the 1918 flu, which was actually grown out, grown out of frozen bodies from which they recovered the flu. So we can quickly tell this is a new one, this is going to give you trouble. And the hope is that as long as we have some lead time, like last year, we can make the vaccine. So the timing would have to be we have no warning or not enough warning, highly contagious, meaning it's spread so rapidly we can't slow it down. Um, and it has to be really nasty. And so anything is possible. I mean, nature has been around. So, but we're doing, we're much better prepared and the likelihood is vastly lower than it would have been in 1918. Very well. Thanks for your time today, Doctor. Thank you.